Hi guys, so um, does any one of you know anything about the Kundalini spirit? Well, that's why I'm here. And the reason I feel so heavily about this topic is because I, like many others, especially Christians, have been caught up in this path where we are so attached to being our own creators that we are losing focus of God's truth. And here's how my journey started. If you look at my previous posts about the uh, meditation, about the law of attraction, it really feels innocent. It's coming from a place of naivety. And I'm saying naivety because the enemy is, de is very, very deceptive. He will bring something that comes from God to make it seem as if it is a God thing. He will use God's principles and twist it so that it will suit him. And here's the difference between God and the adversary is that God is fighting for you. The enemy is fighting against you. But the way he's fighting against you is by bringing to you the principles of God and twisting them so that you lose your focus. There is this scripture that talks about your eyes are the path to your soul. And if you look at meditation, um, the beliefs, it's always about focusing, keeping being your own God focusing on the universe focusing on everything being god except jesus christ and for me um i've been in and out of this fight because it was really hard for me to understand how the law of attraction uh, trusting in you being your own creator is a bad thing especially when you see these things happening when you believe in something it happens and i remember oh god that I see this thing working and I feel inclined to do it but my spirit something in my spirit tells me that it's not a hundred percent what it seems as it feels like it's a pathway to worshiping myself like idol worship and the definition of idol worship because a lot of people don't understand it, it's worshiping things or putting priority things that are not God and it's looking to yourself to be your own creator your own salvation your own healer and that's not true everything that is in you is given by god so that means the power belongs to god you know the power belongs to god not to us so when it's given to us it means the glory should go back to god but you are living in a culture where everyone all of us me included we are so hung up and caught up in self-loving and forgetting that this self-love and i'm putting quotes on it because self-love per se is not a bad thing the bad thing about what we are calling self-love is actually self-action and if you look at them is the dependency on yourself being a god to do things for yourself it's trusting the universe that you can say words to the universe what god created to be a god to you to provide for you what god is providing for you it puts a label on what gives you apart from god and so as i was saying i had this week where i had this battle and i told god show me what the difference is because i can see this thing working and i can see glimpses of truth in it and it's so weird because if you ask god and i mean by god i mean jesus christ if you ask jesus christ to give you an answer to something you best believe that it will happen and people who say that they've prayed to jesus and it has not happened there are people who are still caught up in idol idolism where you want things to turn out your way and not god's way because god is faithful god is so good and kind in the way that he will never give to you something that will destroy you whether that is an information whether it is wealth whatever it is even a relationship and when you look at the enemy the adversary what he does he will give you everything you ask for and it feels so good to get what you ask for every time without restrictions because you know who doesn't want everything to happen for them the way they want it you know it's idolism even in the control spectrum where you want everything to turn out for yourself so in this week in that week that i asked god for clarity and 
it's so funny because God knows how to speak our language. In this path, I found not just people who are speaking about it in depth, but also people who are recommending books. And I'm going to recommend this book because I feel like everyone deserves this book. Whether you are born again, whether you are a Christian, whether you're into spiritual obsession, whether you're into self-love, whether you're into yoga, meditation, whether you're into drug, whatever it is you are, whether you're in depression, you need this book. It's called The Death of a Guru. And it really, it has really changed my life. It has made me see things in clarity. It has made me see the difference between um, meditation, meditating, because there are two forms of meditation. There is meditation in the Word of God and there is meditation in the things of the universe, the law of attraction and all that. The difference is in the meditation of God's Word, it's basically you digging deep into God's Word and seeing the truth of God. Because God's Word is God Himself. He speaks to you and it happens. If it does not happen, it means it is not good for you or the timing is not yet good. When it comes to the law of attraction, it means I will get it no matter what, whether it is good for me or whether it's not. And a lot of people, they have used it, they have gotten what they want, even to relationships. And if you want to test the theory of this thing being really legit, look at it this way. If you have gotten into a relationship through the law of attraction, and you have not based it on the foundations of God. Today, and I'm telling you today, try and focus your energy on finding out about God and seeking God's way. I'm telling you, everything will come crashing down because its foundation is not true. Its foundation is not based on Jesus Christ. You know, just the fact that I asked the question, do you know what Kundalini spirit means? This meditative, you know, the lotus meditation, every time you do the lotus meditation, you're inviting Kundalini spirits, the spirits of the enemy. And some of you, some strange things are happening in your life and you don't understand why. You feel the presence of spirits that you feel in your heart in your spirit in your god man that it is not of god and you have no clue you are living in denial you are rejecting it and god is speaking to you you know the fact that you are here listening to me a small town girl speaking to you about these things is proof that jesus is after you jesus wants the best for you he's not against you and the enemy is putting so much deception even in christians where we are so focused on the outer things that person dressed like this that person is doing this is drinking this and we are not looking at the root all these things are rooted into spiritual things even the drugs even the sexual perversions where people have become so open-minded you know that they cannot see the difference of god's righteousness in sexuality and the enemy's hand on sexuality i'm telling you read this book it's called death of a guru and when you read it read the next book i'm recommending that you read is by john ramirez unmasking the adversary you know the truth is being flagged down even your own salvation is being flagged down and i and the reason i'm recommending this book the death of a guru so highly is because it made me understand why people are caught up in drugs and how drugs are escalating people into this spiritual hunger this is the truth you need to read that book don't just follow things blindly even christians especially christ no heaven there because you're judging people you're not speaking the word of god you have people in your life you know and you know in your spirit that god is calling you to speak to them about the truth of god about what they're doing is wrong in love not in judgment not in throwing stones but you're not doing it you're spending time either judging or keeping silent because you will offend people this is a generation of people being offended people get offended just by the fact that you're breathing so imagine that god has given you the gift the secret to get to heaven and you're depriving people of it this is not a time to sit and think that oh if i speak to that person about jesus christ they will stop being my friend or my relationship will fall or my family will reject me i'm telling you finding god is about 
letting go of everyone and letting go of everything and keeping your focus on God. What falls off, falls off. What sticks, sticks. Because God has a way of cutting off what is not right for you and bringing to you, to your life what is good for you and whatever you lose for the kingdom of God you will gain a hundredfold I'm promising you don't focus on the material things and if you want to prove this is true look at the book of Job I don't know the particular um, scripture but in Job, Job chapter 1 this man of God he was so into God he was so into spiritualism and most of us identify because we are generation where we have this hunger for God but we don't know it we can't identify it as a hunger for God we are just identifying it as a hunger for loving ourselves for seeking to achieve things to be successful to be attached to things that are more than material and if you look at the book of job the enemy actually went to god when god was calling the sons of god so that you know god is a god over everything even the adversary the adversary is a servant to god and this is how i'm going to prove it in job job chapter one when god was calling the sons of god him into this meeting and God did not ask him what are you doing here he God the creator of all things including the adversary asked him where were you get the difference God father the creator of all things did not ask him what are you doing here he asked him what were you doing what does that mean he was serving his purpose the enemy is serving his purpose in deception. He brought sin and his job is to test out people, to lie to people. That's his purpose. But the purpose of God is to seek good things for you, to put good things for you, to give you peace, to give you eternal salvation. Because another fact that we keep denying is that there is there is no existence of god because when we deny the existence of god we deny the existence of heaven and we deny the existence of hell let me tell you if you if you look at yourself and you're bringing these things to life everything you're thinking about you're bringing it to life what do you think that is that is spirituality and every spirituality has a god over it you can call it whatever name you want to call it you can cover out whatever forms of gods you want to form but at the end of the day god is god and the adversary is the adversary this is not a war between humanity so stop focusing on how people look outside what people are doing and stop being caught up in the life of crime the world of social perversion the world of dark spiritual paths and look to god because god is fighting for you the enemy is fighting against you and he, here is another thing we ignore the adversary does not want to burn in hell by himself he needs partner misery loves company so if you think the enemy is sitting down and clapping for you to go to heaven let me tell you you have missed the mark this is a bull's eye you are a bull's eye the enemy is throwing at you and you you are throwing the everywhere except the bull's eye and the bull's eye is your purpose your god ordained purpose you need to find god all of us we know and we know in i believe in our spirits we do know there is a god bigger we do have questions about god because our spirit man knows that god is for real you can deny it you can spit on people for it you can be offended by death over i'm telling you it will open your eyes to a lot of things even when it comes to drugs and i believe this is true because i had a friend who was into drugs and this friend used to tell me that they used to have a very deep spiritual thing happening every time they took it and it got so addictive so they were not taking the drug because of how the drug uh, the effects of the drug they were taking the drug because of the spiritual connection it gave them and that just proves to you everything in this life is spiritual and you might not want to believe even food is spiritual and if you are denying it lack food for a whole week not because you're fasting or you're into intermittent fasting or you're trying to lose weight whatever just lose 
food for an entire week and see if you will not look for God. Everything in this world is spiritual. So open your eyes. Find God. If you found if the law of attraction, this whole universe can give me something, has gone so viral that everyone, including the Christians, know about it. If it has gone so viral because people have looked into it, why not take a chance and look into what Jesus Christ, the Bible says, the word is available everywhere, generation after generation after generation. And you need to, and you need to sit and ask yourself why Jesus Christ, the faith of Jesus, Jesus Christ is the is the main religion being fought. No, it's not about their judgmental people. There is a difference between believing in Jesus Christ and believing in a status quo of people who feel like they believe in Jesus Christ. And <laughs> let me tell you, Christianity, this is why I don't like being identified as a Christian. And I'm sorry and I feel like it's it's a hard thing to say, but people have identified God by Christianity. Christianity is, about, is supposed to be the truth about God. It's supposed to be people guided by God. But they have become the people who are being guided by the world. The people who are being guided by judgment. You need to look at people who are into alcoholism and pray for them, not throw stones at them. You need to look at people who you feel are not modest. Because for me, I believe modesty is relative. What is modesty in African country is not what is modesty in the Western country. In Africa, someone can be offended by a short skirt. In the Western side, people look at a short skirt as a normal way of life you get so there's a difference stop looking at the outer thing stop looking at modesty stop looking at alcoholism and start praying for these people start praying that god will reveal himself to them as he has revealed himself to you let me tell you the fact of heaven and hell is like this people think it is like this it is like this and the reason i'm passionate about this is because i'm one of the people who was getting lost and entangled in this belief but the fact that um, we are living in a world that is so destructive that families are breaking because of the weirdness of things we are living in pandemic times is just proof that leaving man to create for himself is leading to destruction there is nothing good that will ever come out from human beings being their own gods and when you think about yourself being your own god i think we always think it stops there when you become your own god you become a servant of the adversary not of god and god is not the opposite of the adversary and the adversary is not the opposite of god they are distant actually the word of god shows you that the adversary is even beneath you beneath dust even the dust has more value than the adversary so if you're sitting there following yourself as a god you're actually lowering your standards you're actually depriving yourself of self-worth and self-love because when you look to god god calls you royalty god calls you a god god calls you worth dying for and worth rising for that's the god jesus christ who is about so i just want from now on whatever religion you are from that doesn't matter put it aside look to god that is the main way it is narrow you will offend people by speaking about jesus christ you will offend people by speaking about the true light of god because even the enemy comes to deceive looking as light darkness looking as light the true light is jesus christ so everyone needs to put aside their judgments they are being offended by everything and look to god Put your curiosity in seeking God. And if you feel like maybe this God thing, you legit feel like God is not real, ask God to prove it to you. Let me tell you, God will speak your language. He will speak your language in a way you will not deny it. So the only thing I'm telling you, kneel down and ask the Lord Jesus Christ, not any other God, Jesus Christ to give you truth that ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of the living God, Jesus Christ. He is the God over us. He is God over this whole universe. The, the universe you are worshipping belongs to Him. You are worshipping His creation. When He has 
called you to worship him that is an elevation that is something you should want for yourself that is a celebration of your life and after this life there is a life after this and speaking about heaven i'm speaking about hell and god will never force you to make this choice he will never make this choice for you you have to choose whether you will follow jesus christ the son of the living one true god or whether you will follow the adversary there is no in between there is no shortcut not every the world you know people say we all worship the same god lies 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 some people are worshiping themselves some are worshiping the universe i'm telling you people are worshiping even carved things they have carved with their own hands we are not all worshiping the same god it's the way of life and there is the way of the wages of sin which it's going like this you get so trust in god seek god for yourself and stop looking to a, a stuff like oh that minister messed up or that pastor messed up so you can't believe in that god because that pastor messed up let me tell you that pastor that minister will get to heaven because he was walking he was trying to follow the way of christ and he had a thorn in the flesh that he was struggling with while you you are going to the opposite side like this because you have made man a god because if he messed up then because he was so much my god i made him my idol i will not believe in god let me tell you up to you to choose god or to choose the adversary there is only one way to god there is the other downward way where you choose every other god and i'm telling you every other god equates to the adversary it's simple as that and so i'm really highly advising you people that if you can get get this book right now you can access online books so the reason i'm advising please read the death or you read the unmasking by john ramirez it helps you understand some deep things that john ramirez is speaking about all the salvation of your soul so that you can stop thinking that this war is a war against humanity versus humanity this is a war between of your soul between god and the adversary one has to win and the funny thing thank god that jesus christ has put the choice to save your own soul in your own hands so when you choose jesus christ you're saving your soul when you're not choosing jesus christ that is all i'm going to say when you're not choosing jesus christ you're choosing the way of the adversary because that way has been cloned in so many ways in so many to go to idol worship that people are confused about which god is which god the true living god the god of all creation and he has the power to be done with everything but by the fact that we are still here that he's still giving us breath that he's still giving us grace that he has called us even to give us free forgiveness all we have to do is come to him and for the people who don't know jesus christ jesus christ is not complicated to get to jesus christ you don't even have to change your character first come to jesus christ first just ask him god come into my life prove yourself to me i give you and i surrender everything my heart my soul my body my spirit my mind to you mold me change me and leave it at that and spend your time looking in the word of god the bible you can find the bible in apps and please be very careful because there are bibles which have removed the most basic things in the word of god so that you can be lost into this idol worshiping self as meditation yoga let me tell you <laughs> brah don't play with your life like be serious this is not a time to please people this is not a time to look fancy or look cute so that you don't compromise relationships because you're not speaking about jesus christ this is a time to be bold no one can touch you when god is with you you know man can destroy your flesh god will can destroy both your flesh and your soul so you better choose which way to go you know and don't underestimate the the adversary
this guy used to be in heaven he used to be in the holy of holies you think he doesn't know how to play his cards he's watching you he's looking at oh you care about wealth let me show you i'm going to take your eyes the door to your soul to focus on material things or oh, you don't think uh, you're so judgmental that is the enemy taking your eyes the door to your soul to focus on what other people are not doing right instead of looking to yourself and speaking God's truth this thing let me tell you it has to come from God to self to people it is not self 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 you get so I could speak about this all day but this goes to show that everyone is equipped if you have God. You can speak about matters people are afraid of speaking about. And some of you, God has called you into leadership because we have now corrupt leadership and it seems like there is no salvation. And there are people who have been called into leadership and you're sitting in your purpose. Let me tell you, the word of God says God's purpose must prevail. What does that mean? It will prevail even despite you. So you better wake up. You better start doing God's work. The Lord Jesus Christ work. Whether it costs you or whether it is a smooth flow. Because, you know, this is a, is a narrow path. You know, it's not a path where people clap for you. People give you applause. This is a path where you have to wake up one day and know who you are living for. Okay. If you would like me to speak deep about this, also before I leave, there is something, an important information I want to tell you. While you're in this topic of looking into Jesus Christ, I want you to go and research where meditation started from. And I want you to research where this Abraham Hicks whole thing is coming from. The person who invented this whole meditation, trusting in the universe thing, was against Jesus Christ. Like, it's not even hidden. Go check. Check, people. Like, let me tell you everything. You know, there's this scripture that says, wisdom screams in the streets. And I'm telling you, it's true. Now it's screaming online. We are not seeing it. it speaks about this person getting spiritual. I'm just going to leave it there. Go research. I used to think it was just this guy who used to do these things. It's actually a woman being used by the spiritual realm and she even admits it, bringing out things to speak into your life. And you're seated there still trying to convince yourself there is no God. Oh yeah, oh, Jesus Christ help us. Look into it. Stop following beliefs because someone said so. Actually, don't even believe me. Go kneel and ask Jesus Christ to prove himself to you. Because who knows if I'm lying to you. And if you don't pray to a God, you're going to pray to every other God, including yourself. <sighs> Usa. Now that we have calmed down, please buy yourself a Bible. Kneel down and pray to the living God, Jesus Christ, and get your life straight. Get it handled. If you don't do it, someone will handle it for you. Thank you for your time. I love you. I appreciate you. God bless you. And may God's true light shine in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The blood of Jesus, that is all I'm going to say. Bye.